Hello guys, welcome back. This is the third video in the Databricks free edition series. If you are new to the channel, I have already created the introduction to Databricks free edition and navigating the Databricks UI as the second video. So in the third video, what I want to do is once you know the UI, then you want to write something in the Databricks UI, right? For that, you need to have some kind of compute and you, you need to create notebook. So this video, I want to show you what is cluster and how you can create the cluster or use the cluster already in the Databricks free edition and create a notebook where you can start writing the code. I try my best to not to do same things in many videos. I have already this 30 days of Databricks series, which was created one year ago, but these kind of things are relevant always right there is the cluster creation and notebook creation but this was for the community edition but still if you want to know better understanding of cluster creation and notebook in separate videos i have explained in these two videos you can refer to that but i will try my best to explain in simple terms in this video also but i want to combine these two videos into one so i can cover many things from the new free edition now let's go into the ui this is the ui i will make the screen a bit bigger this is the UI that we landed based on the last video and we went through the UI walkthrough. The first part of the video, let's go through what is compute and how to create the compute. On the left menu, you can see there is a thing called compute. If you click into the compute, it will take you to this UI. Here it says SQL warehouse, vector search, and there is apps, right? Let's go to the SQL warehouses and there is one compute here so serverless starter warehouse so here you can see this is created by this size is 2x and this is serverless here i can start this permissions and the query history i can see from here did i created this no because data when i when i logged in or signed up into the databricks free edition this is by default being created for you so for free edition there is no possibility as far what I see in the UI to create ourselves, right? This is already being created. And this is star serverless starter warehouse. By the way, I will show you in the notebook also later. This is useful to run the SQL, right? But then I said we are going to create the notebook. Then how can you use this in the notebook? I will show you that also. And yeah, so that's it for the compute. Compute in general is something that is powering whatever you do in the Databricks UI. Just think as simple as that, right? That's the first part of the compute. Now let's go into the second part, how to create the notebook. I said that we can use this only for SQL, but what about other Python or other languages, right? For that, although it is not shown here, the compute, we can use it once we are into the notebook, right? So now let's go into the next part where we can create the notebook, right? Here is a plus icon. That's the easiest way to create the notebook. You can go into workspace and so on. Let's go into this plus icon. And here you can see the first is notebook. Let's create the notebook. Let's click this one notebook. Now you can see a new Jupyter notebook kind of interface pops up here. You can see here, this is the similar to the VS Code Jupyter Notebooks or Jupyter Notebooks, whatever you are familiar with, you see similar kind of things. And in the left side, you can see there is this table of contents. There is the folders icon, uh, which uh, it's, it's here, like folders icon. And this is already the catalog. I'll go to that later, not in this video. And there is this assistant. Also, I'll create a new video about it. I can even close this for now. So now this is the notebook. Right, you can see here, I can write something here that is similar to other normal IDs. There is this file where there are many things here. You can export, you can schedule, you can share all sorts of things, but it is specific to Databricks, let's say. And there is this edit where you can edit many things, view from here, you can view the layout and so on. You can run and debug and you can see there are many things around all above, all below, something like this, right? If you are used to normal Jupyter Notebooks, I think you get it. If not, this is really handy when you write the code. 
so that you can see the output as soon as you write the code in the shell output itself i will show you that later and now it says here python so you, you might be confusing okay why it's showing here python because we can this is the good part of notebook in databricks in databricks you have the possibility of writing the code in multiple languages by the way i'm explaining this as if you just landed into the databricks ui if some of you are already experienced please skip mm, mm, some parts of the video it's up to you and there is this python then you can even write sql you can write scala code you can write r code right based on your preference not everyone must know all the languages if you know also that's great but you can choose different languages in the notebook right i'm just going with the python for now and here you can see this is edited something you can start this and here there is this notebook and dashboard views if you click this you can see notebook view you can just go here and do dashboards let's not go into that right now and then here is the schedule you can share this and so on and on the left side also you can see this is the hide navigation i'll just hide this up bar and the down bar and here there are some things it says comments this is good because when you write in the notebook somebody can comment it because you can share this notebook to others meaning that you can do it side by side i can write the code your friend or colleagues whoever you share this notebook right in the same notebook so you can even have comments there if i click this you can see there is this no comments here but you can provide the comment here you can see here there is this add comment if i say here add comment hello just example and now this is here if i click this one you can see this is the hello so this is how you can do the collaborative work now here is another one which is called ml for experiments when you do the experiments it will be appearing there and here you can see version history so if i click this this is just the first version if i had different versions it will be also showing showing there so you can save this and so on it's up to you and here you can see the variables because once you create the variables it's easy if you see the variables here right that's also possible and then here this is the environment there are many things here i will not go into this in depth but you can see also what is the memory so it is under the hood provided for us and if you have the budget policy you can choose the budget policy here because in the organization different teams you might you might have different budget policy for different teams it's also possible so base environment you can provide here and this is environment version from here which version you want to provide dependencies you can add the dependencies what are the available dependencies you can refresh the page if there are some and if you want to add something add dependency and you can write the python packages let's say that i want to add here mm, or do i want to add let's say i want to add boto3 like this i can say apply so now it is confirm action i can say yes confirm now you can see boto3 whenever you run something there should be a compute needed and whenever i run this you can see here there is something called starting appearing here and if i just go here it says starting serverless right so this is another compute that is provided by databricks for us to work in the notebook it's automatically created we didn't see that in the compute but it is already here in the serverless you can also use the sql serverless which i showed you before i'll show you how you can do this because it's also appearing here it's serverless starter warehouse and you can see it's not started now it is started here connected and and from here you can detach or reattach something like this just again just to show you whenever you write here something let me just go here and do before doing terminate if i refresh you can see there is the boto3 which we just installed right that is how you can see it but then if i now do here and if i terminate here i will terminate so now this is gone because there is nothing that is powering it right if i refresh this it will not be showing what is compute whenever you do something there should be something powering that right it is terminating here now this is the python so you i, I hope i went into a bit more explaining these things but i hope now you get the idea why you need compute into the notebooks the good part is also you can install directly from here the packages that you need so here i will say print well the classic hello world 
Now I type this. How to run this? So there is this thing called run cell or you can just go here and click run cell, run all above if there was many and so on. I can just click this run cell, right? When I say run cell, as you can see here, it again started the cluster. It was terminated before, right? So by default, it is started and here it is going it's waiting now it's connected but now the cell will be executed just below this cell and you can even have shortcuts to open the command palette and so on so now it says hello world this is how you print and now you might be thinking so this is the connected serverless but you were saying that we can also use sql right so now let's do one thing i can already do from here but let's go to the compute one more time i will start this it is now started and now I will go back to recent from there you can go to this latest notebook that was created you can also give the name so here I can say um, first notebook that's it right so now we know this is the first notebook and here if I go now to the connected you can see there are now two serverless compute for us and now we are using this serverless one but what happens if i click this one i will go into this now there is the warning that is what i was saying you before are you sure you want to switch compute resources this will clear the state of this notebook sql warehouse only support sql and markdown cells cells of other languages types will fail during the execution i will confirm and now i will run this let's see what happens enter it will not run right because unsupported cell during execution sql warehouse only supports sql cell so let's say that i want to create a new cell here i will say code if you just hover on just below this it will show here i will text means it's the markdown where you can write something maybe i can go here text you can see this is the markdown i can say here this is the first notebook and i will just run you can see this is already this show preview so this is how it will be it will be shown you can just do shift enter that's it this is the first notebook this is the documentation for this notebook you can have multiple of those right now let's go and i click this code again here on the top there is the possibility to change the whole notebook which language default language you want to have but you can have multiple inside also this is the python one but i can change to this python this is in python i can now go here let's say i want to have it in sql so you can see this is in python this is in sql that is also possible although we have python here but you need to have particular warehouses to run this now this is the serverless if i run here i will get the completion for the sql statements let's say i want to select you can see the select statement here so i can say select hello world just to show you that this works when i say select hello world it is showing in the table hello world but if i run this it will not work right now let me switch back to serverless so now this is serverless, and if i run this it will run because now this is python so now what happens if i run this hello world and then sql it will work the reason is to show the differences between the compute when we were choosing the serverless only provided here we, you can run all sorts of languages inside the notebook right but if you choose the serverless starter warehouse then you are uh, only allowed to run sql statements I hope that is clear in the enterprise world if you have the paid version of databricks then you have the possibility to choose the let me see whatever we call it the power let's say in a way but i want to use the exact word the size of the um, compute for example here we have 2xx and if i go here i can choose many things but i'm not allowed to do it in the free edition but in the organizations admin control all these things so you can also choose whatever you want to have that is all i wanted to show you in this video now i hope you know what is compute or cluster where it provides the compute power right so i just told you how to create the notebook navigate through the notebooks and now i hope you have the better understanding of sql warehouse compute 
and the normal serverless compute and when to use what so yeah that's all i want to show you in this video in the next video there were some questions related to dbfs and i cannot see the dbfs in the free edition how to upload the data csv files and read it into the notebook and so on so i will create that video thank you for watching and see you in the next video